And finally we come to the spinal cord. It's the most caudal part of the central nervous system. That's why it develops from the caudal part of the neural tooth. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, then you should watch my recent videos about the neural tube and embryology of the central nervous system. The first what you see here is the cerebral pedunculi with the intrapeduncular fossa. This is the cerebral pedunculi, and this over here is the fossa. Maybe you don't understand how it looks like, but it will make more sense after I draw other stuff too. And as we go downwards, the next structure is the pons. It means bridge in Latin. There are numerous functions of this structure, but I will explain it in the next videos, because this is not the part of the spinal cord. Right below that, there are pyramids of the medulla oblongata and the ovary body. So these are the pyramids, and this is the ovary body. The ovary body are the nuclei, and the pyramids are the elevations caused by the corticospinal tract. The corticospinal tract means it comes from the cortex of the brain, and then it goes to the spinal cord. That's why it's corticospinal tract. The pyramid is found between two sulcuses the anterior median sulcus and the anterolateral sulcus that is between the olivary body and the pyramid. Somewhere over here it is a decussation of pyramids. It is the place where almost 80% of motor fibers in the pyramids cross. So we have the fibers coming from the brain, going to the pyramids and at the decussation of pyramids they cross. When they cross the middle line, they continue down as the lateral cerebrospinal fasciculus. This is a very important place because this is the place where spinal cord begins and the medulla oblongata ends. Up there we had the medulla oblongata and down is the spinal cord. Let's write this all down. This was a pons. This was the cerebral pedunculi. This was the interpeduncular fossa. Then we had the olivary body. We had the pyramids. We had this sulcus over here. It was the anterolateral sulcus. And this sulcus over here was the anterior median sulcus. Now I will talk about the spinal cord. The spinal cord is divided in more parts. First I will draw the cervical part. This is the neck part of the spinal cord. As I mentioned before, there are spinal nerves. The spinal nerves come from the roots of the spinal nerves. There are anterior and posterior roots of the spinal nerves. The posterior come from the posterolateral sulcus, which we cannot see from this perspective. And the anterior root of the spinal nerve comes from the anterolateral sulcus of the spinal cord. They join and they create the spinal nerve. So we have the posterior roots and we have the anterior roots. The anterior roots come from the anterolateral sulcus and the posterior roots come from the posterolateral sulcus which we cannot see because it's behind. Now the place where the spinal nerve exits the vertebral column is used to give the spinal cord segment names. For example we have the vertebrae here those are the bones. I will just illustrate it very simple. Those are the vertebrae, one after another, and they enclose the spinal cord from all sides. So if this spinal nerve leaves the vertebra column above the second vertebrae, then we will name this segment of the spinal cord here C2. C stands for cervical, and 2 describes that the spinal nerve coming from this spinal cord segment leaves the vertebral column 
above the second vertebra. Now this goes like this all the way to the thorax. We have the last C7 vertebra and then we had the TH vertebra, TH1. So the spinal nerve comes somewhere from here for example and then it exits between these two. Now this segment of the spinal cord will be named C8 and then comes another vertebra TH2 and the spinal nerve leaves between TH1 and TH2. This segment of spinal cord will be called TH1. So first we had the situation when we have the spinal nerve leaving above the second vertebra the segment is called C2. So here the spinal nerve leaves above but here it leaves below. So we have the spinal nerve leaving under the TH1 and it's called the segment is called TH1. So here it's under but up there it was above. Now I explained to you where it happens and where it changes. It changes around the C8 segment and I illustrated that here.